everyone, it's Janet and welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing you an unboxing and initial trial run of the new We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill System. The appeal with this product is that it will turn most electronic cutting machines into a heat foiling system. It's designed to work with the following machines, Cricut, Brother, Silhouette, and Sizzix. So this is the product I ordered. It's brand new and it's called the all-in-one bundle because it has all three of the foiling thickness pens and all the pen adapters for each of the machines I just mentioned. This package retails for $99 and I do know that my local Joann's has this and several foil options stocked at that price, the $99 and I think the foil is $6.99. However, I tried my coupon to buy more foil and it wasn't accepted. So that means Joann is treating all foil quill products the same way as they treat cutting machines and accessories and that means their normal discount coupons won't work. I, brought, I bought my product from Swing Design and they offered a small discount, uh, actually it was a pretty decent discount and it brought it down to $72. They didn't charge any tax and I live in North Carolina. Possibly in other states you could be charged for tax, I don't really know how that all works. I just know I didn't get taxed. So I was at least able to save $27 plus tax by ordering through Swing Design. There was a problem with We Are Memory Keepers releasing the product on time, so a lot of retailers are backed up or have a small stock currently, including, uh, including Swing Design, which sent this much later than you would have expected, but they were backed up and they sent it as soon as they could. So I'm going to open the box, take everything out, and then I'll come back to go through what's included. Alright, I'm back. Now that I have all the parts out of the box, let's discuss how this product works. This is a heat and pressure foiling system. The foil coil pin, and there are three of these, uh, the foil quill pin is corded and powered through a USB connection to a power source such as an outlet or a power pack. And this heats the pen nib. You then basically trick your machine to think it is writing when in fact it's applying the heated pen to the foil surface. And the heat and the pressure transfer the foil to your paper or other material and voila! You're supposed to get a pretty foil design as a result. We'll see when I do some tests in a few minutes. So here are the three pens that come in this box. We have a fine in the pink and this is really tough to see. The green is a medium and the navy blue is a um, bold. So maybe you can see from that differences. Okay, You can see each cord has a USB end that I mentioned earlier and again to make the heat pens work in the cutting machine you need to remove the standard pen holder and replace it with the included pen holder from We Are Memory Keepers and they have four different pen holders. Alright we have A, B and in here we have C and D. A is for the silhouette machines the B is for the brother, the C is for Cricut, and the D is for Sizzix. So at least with uh, the C for Cricut and the B for brother, it's very easy to remember by their lettering which machine you use them for. So there you go, A, B, C, D, and you can see they're very different looking in appearance, so that obviously matters. All right. So per instructions, you should wait five minutes after plugging in the heat pen before trying to foil. And when it's heating up, they've included this metal spatula, which is in this little baggie here. And you place this under the pen. So what it does is it protects the plastic closest to the pen from overheating, scorching, or you know otherwise melting. These are the main parts of the system, along with three sample rolls of foil, we have silver, a kind of a rose gold or a copper, and regular yellow gold. <clears throat> Lastly, we have a roll of washi tape, and this is to be used to stick down your foil before you use your machine. Last, there is an instruction booklet, um, and this has various instructions in English, I think Spanish, German, French, so there's some various uh, languages that this includes. 
So let's look at and talk about this foil for a minute. We are memory keepers say that only their foil will work with the foil quilt, which means you would have to use their foil and only their foil for this system. I'm really hoping that's not true. In theory, any heat and pressure transfer foil would work with the foil quilt. For example, I'm hoping that the mink foil will work as that's a heat pressure foil and I have lots of it in my stash to try. However, I have to admit that the mink also requires that toner be present to properly adhere the foil to paper. Obviously, there's no toner in this process, so it may not be enough to just have heat and pressure to make the mink foil work. Or it may be that the foil quill will lay down the mink foil, but without the toner, it'll rub off really easily. So I plan on coming back to test other heat foils to see if there are other options out there. This foil does seem maybe a little bit thicker, but definitely a lot less staticky than other foils I've used. So certainly there is a difference right off the bat. Although how much of a difference and what it really means is yet to be seen. And that brings me to the next thing that's a little controversial about the foil quill. You see, this is not a sanctioned product by any of the cutting machine companies. And in fact, all of them already have another foiling system and don't take very kindly that We Are Memory Keepers has put out a competing product. At least that's the impression I'm getting out there. And for this reason, you probably aren't going to see a lot of the other machine-sponsored crafters testing the foil quill as they would be risking their sponsorship and goodies from Cricut Brother and so forth. I have no affiliation, so I'm free to try it all and tell you exactly what I experience and think. And believe me, I plan to do that, so please subscribe if you haven't already, as I have several videos planned to test different machines and materials using the foil quill. You'll be able to get the straight scoop right here with me. Alright, so anyway, because the other cutting machine companies are not happy about this launch, I feel like the odds might be high that the cutting companies may combine forces to go after We Are Memory Keepers. Now, it will take a while for a result to come out of any lawsuit if that happens. And I'm not predicting it will, but I'm just saying it could. Uh, but you can be sure that if the machine companies sue, they will go after both the system and the foils, especially if the foils are only usable in the foil quill. And if they should win such a lawsuit, the foil will begin to disappear off the market, and a great product may just die with it. That's one large concern I have about the system and something to think about if you decide to invest in it. The other concern everyone should think about is that all the machine companies will say that using the foil quill will void their machine's warranty. Now my machines are well outside of warranty so I don't really care. But if you have a new machine, like maybe you've got one of the new makers, you may want to wait to use the foil quill. Now, interestingly enough, We Are Memory Keepers say that they may be able to help if their product harms your machine. I'll put the full statements about this from both We Are Memory Keepers and Cricut in my video description so you can see that for yourself and make a decision. So here's my Cricut Explore. It's an older model and it may even be the first model as I needed to get the wireless dongle to make it wireless. So in any case, there's no worries about this one being out of warranty. So I'm going to start by removing the pen holder, and that is going to be this. Now, if you don't have the pen holder, you would remove your um, cutter blade. But in my case, I've got that. Now, you need a lot of pressure. Push up, and it will come out. So set that aside, and obviously don't lose it. So here's my Cricut Explore. It's an older model, and it might even be the first model, as it needed the wireless dongle to make it wireless. So anyway, there are no worries about this one being within warranty. I'm going to remove the pen holder, and if you have a machine without a pen holder, you would just use your cutter holder. But in this case, with the Explorers, you do have a pen holder. And now you just need to push up, and you'll need to use a good amount of force, but it will come up. Just be careful, and um, you know I would suggest you hold on to the bottom and the top while you're doing that, pushing up with your other fingers so that you don't put a lot of pressure on this itself, just on this piece. So anyway, you'll take that out and you'll set it aside and be sure you know where you put it because you don't want to lose that. All right, so then what you're going to do is you're going to grab your C, in this case, pen holder, and I'm going to start with the fine pen, and I'm going to put it in. Now there are screw marks here, so you will want to screw it together to make it tight. And then you just 
insert it into your pen holder and it's just going to kind of naturally stop close up your holder and you should be ready to go there also I will put the little metal spatula just underneath the pen uh, and that will supposedly protect it from excess heat now here is that USB end I told you about before and I'm going to insert it into a wall converter where I have the USB built in and then I'm going to plug this into my wall now it does say in the manual you could plug this into your machine if you have a USB on it in my case I don't have a USB plug so that's impossible but it also says even if you have a USB plug it may not power it so just be aware of that it may or may not um, and a lot of people are also demoing this where they plug it into a battery pack and I'm sure that would be very good as well however in my mind I'm kinda wondering if uh, it makes a difference for the power source uh, because like an iron it may cool down this this heated nib um, with extended use or by using a large design and I wonder if I'll get a more steady uh, heat source or you know electric current through the wall rather than th say through a battery unit because that could vary uh, in electrical current and so I have no idea if what I'm saying is even remotely true I just feel like it makes some sense to me and since it's easy enough for me to plug it in the wall I'm going to do that uh, also be aware that this cord's quite short it's only two feet so if you're not that close to a wall if you're going to use a converter like this you need to probably get yourself a little extension cord and plug it in in my case I don't need that I'm actually close enough to a wall so uh, now that we've got this set up I'm going to plug it in set my alarm for five minutes and in the meantime let's go set up something in design space to test it out okay so here I am in design space and I found this scrolled heart image uh, which is intended to be a drawn image instead of a cut image and you can tell that because up here it will say when it's selected that the line type is draw and it's going to show pen color here so I, I think that it's likely to work best with a image that is designed to be written or drawn so that's why I've chosen something like this um, now I'm going to get it to pause between each image because I need to switch the pens so in order to do that I've just changed the color of each of the three images and therefore it should stop to allow me to change uh, in theory the pen color but in fact I'll be changing the heat foil pen nib instead and then letting it heat up for five minutes before continuing on now I do wonder if results will vary by machine since I'm sure my pressure is probably not exactly the same as another machine mine is older and also may not have as much pressure as a newer machine to, and that's always a possibility too of course I can set my pressure to be heavier and slow down the drying speed on my machine to help if that's a problem we'll see how it goes and if my first try at it doesn't work I will experiment with that a little bit and do it again but I don't know how it's going to turn out because I haven't done it yet so we'll see how it goes now let me point out that if you uh, want to cut after foiling you would need to make sure that your cut line and in this case I've drawn a rectangle here is set to cut so when I choose that you can see that line is set to cut um, and that's what you'd need to do same with if you chose a design that is intended to be cut you would just need to change the line which would say cut to draw so the important thing is to remember is um, anything that you want to foil has to be set as a draw line otherwise you're just going to end up cutting it and that obviously isn't what you're attempting to do all right now I'm going to uh, cut the A2 rectangle size it's a little smaller than an A2 card so four by five and a quarter and this is because I don't want to waste this uh, hopefully it all turns out and I can then use these as card bases um, my thought is as I would do that and put a sentiment right across here of some sort um, maybe on foam tape or something so um, that's my intention here and the reason I'm cutting it this way so I'm going to take a minute now um, and come back once I've gotten the foil laid out and we're ready to draw and we'll see what happens. All right, 
I'll be back in a bit. All right, so it's been at least five minutes and I've set my paper and attached my foil and I did it as the instruction said, which was place the tape at the bottom, push it up, attach it, and then do the sides as well. Let's try to get it as taut as possible. And I'm going to try to do this on uh, blue paper. So what I'm going to do is put this in the machine. I'll go ahead and start it and then um, I'll come back after or close to when the third is finished. And I'm going to do the fine tip first, the medium tip, and then the bold tip. And we'll see what kind of results we get. So here we go. Oh, I got to take off this. All right. Okay, I've paused the machine now. All of the foiling is done. And what I need to do now, I think, is remove all the foiling. Let's see what we got. Okay, so from what I can see so far, it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and cut it now. First, I'm going to take this out just to make sure it doesn't interfere with anything. Okay, I will take these apart and we'll take a look at the results. Okay, so let's look at the results. Uh, we've got the fine, medium, and bold nibs. So let's take a look at it. This is the fine, and you can see everything looks uniform. I didn't get any skipped areas. There are a few weird little things, like some of my leaves don't match up, but I think that is more my drawing than the uh, actual pen having a problem. And so I'm not going to be critical of the pen for that. So that is the fine. Let's look at the medium. Medium is very similar. It looks all uniform. I'm not missing any in terms of it, you know, not actually laying down where the pen went down. Uh, I do see I've got a little errant right here, some foil that doesn't belong there. And I can't just get that off with my finger. So I'm going to try that, try erasing it with just a standard pencil eraser. See if it comes off really easy. not really coming off with that so I'm going to try my mono eraser this is a mono sand eraser ah and as I thought would probably be the case the mono sand eraser takes that off real easily so you might want to have that handy or invest in a couple of these they're really inexpensive so again this looks really good and you can tell the difference between uh, the fine and the medium there. You definitely see this is a little thicker. So let's look at the bold tip next. This looks pretty good too. For some reason, this flower petal is definitely not as thick as the lines down here. I'm not sure what caused that, but that would be the only thing I don't really like too much about it. And even that is a, not a big deal. I'm definitely gonna use this on a card base. Um, and then you can see the difference between the medium and the bold, which honestly I don't really see a huge difference. It's just a little bit. Let's look at this side. This is the medium. This is the bold. So there's a, a tiny difference. But for me, I'm thinking I'm probably going to use the fine and the medium tips most based just on this experiment. So overall, my impressions with the foil quill are that it's easy to use, 
The foil is very easy to handle since it's thicker and a little less staticky than other foils I've handled. And the transfer of the foil onto the paper really works well and actually a bit better than I even expected. The foil seems to stick in place well. I mean, it doesn't just rub off. So that's good too. So overall, I'd give this product about a four and a half out of five stars. And the only reason I wouldn't give it five is just because when it came to the, the bold nib, it didn't do exactly the same thickness as the other lines. But overall, that's kind of a minor complaint because it's still foiled pretty nicely. It's just that it wasn't uniform on the bold, at least in this test. So kind of a minor thing, but um, other than that, it's pretty impressive, actually. Uh, so in my next video, I'm going to test some other surfaces, including vinyl, acetate, uh, faux leather, and probably burlap. And I may come up with some other things, too. I'm curious, for example, if a um, texture cardstock will work very well with this. So we'll test it and see what we get. I'll definitely be testing other foils as well, so stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed and check that you've got that bell uh, click so that you'll get a notice when I post my next video. I'll also be trying the foil quill with the Brother Scanning Cut. Uh, since that machine can scan and then write what it scans, I'm going to try some of my favorite stamps from my stash and foil those designs. This is a really exciting possibility, I think, with the scan and cut. And I think of all of my beautiful floral stamps, for example, I may be able to get some really fantastic foiling results from that. Well, that does it for me today. Thanks for visiting with me, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Well, once again, thank you for joining me here today. I really appreciate you visiting, and I've put up here uh, the link to subscribe to my channel and also to a couple more videos that I think you might be interested in seeing if you like this one. So I hope to see you back soon, but until then, keep crafting. Bye!